Hello everybody, welcome to my channel and in today's video we'll be looking at the Sunsky environment in Dash Studio. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are in Dash Studio again. I've already set up my figure and I've already set up my camera just to save time. And today we'll be looking at the Sunsky settings in the environment mode. So to change to Sunsky mode, we go to render settings, we go to environment and from the drop down menu here we choose Sunsky. So in this tutorial, I will only be looking at the actual Sun Sky settings. So the other settings I've already covered in my previous tutorials with the HDRI Maps and the HDRI Maps Advanced tutorials. So I really recommend you watch those first to get an understanding of the, the settings. And the links for that will be in the description box. So let's get started with Sun Sky. So the first Sun Sky setting that we have is this one here, Sun Node. So what we can do with this setting is we can actually choose the direction of the sun. We can actually set the specific direction of the sun. We can control it. So if I click on that, I can choose a node. So these are the things that are in my scene here. Okay. So if I choose my camera, the sun will come from the direction of my camera. So if, when I do accept, just before I hit accept, this the, the direction of the shadow will change. So I'll do accept. And you'll see that the sun now is coming directly from the direction of where my camera is hitting her face and then obviously the shadow is reflecting that it's going behind her. So this is a great way to choose a specific direction of the sun. So you can choose maybe add another camera in your scene, put that to where the direction of the sun where you want it to be and then attach the, uh, the sun node to that camera and then you can have the exact direction of the sun. So I don't generally use that but this is a great idea. You can maybe want to use it for your scene. So let's just turn that off. Put it back to normal. Now another way we can change the direction of the sun and choose it is through the latitude and longitude. So you'll see when I start moving it, the shadow will start moving. So we change the latitude and longitude and I can change the longitude. And okay, so the reason why that's gone dark is because we're simulating the sun going down. So the sun's gone down, it's nighttime essentially. And we keep going, we keep going and eventually it will be day, there you go. Sunrise and then we're back again on the other side. So as you can see, the shadows changed as well. So we can change the kind of shadow, whether we want it longer, which will reflect obviously longer shadows reflect that the sun's going down. Um, and then shorter shadows like these ones here means the sun's higher up in the sky. Right, I'll just reset these back to normal. Our next setting is the day and time. So we can set the specific day and time that the sun was in a specific, calen in a specific calendar date. So because I'm based in the UK, well, this, this is the day for me and this is the month. For my US friends, yours would obviously be the month here and the day here. So don't get confused. This is the day for me and the month. So I'm going to change the month here to August. And I'm going to change the time to say, I don't know, three o'clock. So at three o'clock on the 10th of August, 2015, that's where the position of the sun was. And that's what it looked like. So that's another way to simulate the sun there. Okay. So over here, we've got the UTC offset hours. So this is another way to change the direction of the sun using the time reference. The time is your reference. So as I start moving it, you'll see that the actual shadows start moving and the sun start moving around. So that's another way to kind of find the position. I'm just going to reset that back. Right, our next settings are sun disk intensity. So this is the brightness of the sun, how vibrant we want the sun to be, the intensity of the light. So if I choose five, you can see the sunlight's gone very bright. You can see on the figure there. And the sun disk scale is how big we want to make the sun. So, so remember, the bigger you make something, so as soon as I make the sun bigger, watch the shadow here, the shadow will get softer. So if I choose something like 10, you can see it's got a bit softer now around the edges. It's basically, you're kind of simulating like a soft box. So imagine like when we did the spotlights, we have a spotlight with the rectangle geometry. The intensity is say, for example, the lumens. So we chose 100,000 lumens, but we made the actual soft box bigger. So in this case, we made the sun bigger. It doesn't mean the brightness is going to be bigger. It means the actual softness of the light will be distributed more. So that's why you got this kind of softness here. And then glow intensity will just make it the glow around the sun, the glow effect around the sun bigger. So if I choose five here, you'll see that it, get, it will get a little bit brighter around the sun. So here we have the physically sales sun setting. 
and generally it's, it's always set to on. So what happens is when the sun is scaled, everything will be amplified, the settings will be amplified. So have a sun disk intensity, have a glow intensity will be amplified. So when I turn this off, you'll see that the actual brightness goes down. So that's up to you to decide. Obviously that just means you'll have to, you know, put up these numbers a bit more higher. Basically, there you go. You'll have to put the numbers a bit more higher. So I'll set these, reset these back to normal. So I'm just turn that back on. Reset these back to normal. Okay. So our next setting is SS haze. So what this does, it just changes the haze, the kind of color of the, the your scene. So we're going from here to like overcast. See, so you got the kind of overcast there, and then you've got kind of gets a bit more orangey, more hazier. So you you can this is kind of simulating, for example, like you're going from a clear sky to a overcast sky to a maybe a sandstorm Sahara desert kind of thing. So kind of scene basically. So that's what this does here. So I'll just reset that back to normal again. So here we've got SS blue tint, blue red tint. So what this does is changes the redness of the actual sun. So if I go left a bit, it'll go like bluer. You get like a bluer sun. If I go towards the right, you'll get more redness. So, you know, imagine being I don't know, Superman on Krypton, and you got a red sun there. So you're trying to create that kind of red sun effect. Right, our next one is saturation. So this just changes the saturation, increases saturation. So if I want to start increasing, you'll see the saturation, which is the actual color. Remember saturation is color. So we're getting a more defined saturated color, more deeper colors with saturation. So you can see You've got the skies really, really blue up there, very intense. So I'll change that back to normal. So this one here, horizon height. So this is the horizon height here. This here is the horizon. So we can change the height of that. So when I start increasing it, the height will go up. And when I decrease it, the height will come down. So I'm just gonna leave that there actually. So horizon blur, guess what that does? It blurs the horizon, adds our Lovely Gaussian blur to effect to it. So there we go. That's a kind of Gaussian effect blur to the horizon. So that's what that does there. Now, SSS night color is very interesting. Uh, what you can do is you can actually get nighttime sky color, basically. So I know this is set to black and black doesn't really work very well. The best setting for this is actually, this is a great tip for you is a very, very dark blue. So you want to kind of go to here and kind of just turn it down to a very dark kind of blue. Now, nothing's happened here at the moment. And the reason why that is, is because it is at nighttime, is it? So I need to change the time to reflect nighttime. So I'm just going to change that to one in the morning, zero one, and there we have a nighttime. Now, again, you can't see anything because we need to go to the actual tone mapping. So we go tone mapping. And this is where the magic happens, so to speak. So the ISO is what we need to change to 800. The F stop we need to change to two. And then the shutter speed we change to two as well. And there you go. There's our night sky here. There's our night sky, it's got night sky here. This is the, this is the exact color that we chose i go down here, night color here. So if I chose, say, I don't know, red, it's gonna be red. So there we go, that's how that works. So remember that only works when it's actually nighttime here, the setting. If you don't set this setting here, you won't get the night color. So, and remember that these settings here, tone mapping, oh, just cancel that, tone mapping. These, you need to have these settings here, 800 for ISO, two for F-stop and two for shutter. You could play around with these settings. I mean, you could change this to maybe five. And you can see a slight difference here. So it's not like you're restricted to not playing around settings. It's just that I've given you some default settings here for you to at least get started with the night, the night, uh, the night mode. So I'm just going to reset these back to normal so it doesn't mess up my other settings. And the environment and the time. I'm just going to set that back to 1300. And, and well, the night color doesn't really matter because we're not doing that now. 
Okay, so we've got here the SSS multiplier and what this does is it literally multiplies all the, the intensity settings by a factor of whatever you choose. So at the moment it's set to 0. Oops, it's set to 0. 0.1. So if I set it to 1, the screen will go bright, like really bright. There you go. So that's something you may, you may want to look into. So I'll set that back to the default. So this setting here, RGB unit conversion, this is a special setting. So what this does, this is based on the actual luminosity of the uh, RGB that's coming from the actual sunlight. So at the moment it's set to one, which is set to like the lumens unit conversion that we have in our spotlights. And in the actual documentation, it recommends that you set this to 0 0.318 to make it a realistic num a realistic kind of version of light so it'll change it to candela per square meter now in all honesty that doesn't mean anything to me all this means to me is that oh the screen's gone darker a bit so with this setting you can actually change the actual conversion of light so if i change that to 0 0.5 you can see you're kind of changing the the conversion of light it's, it's being used in a different way. So if you stay to the end of the, end of the tutorial, I'll show you something really cool you could do with this and uh, definitely worth staying for. So make sure you stay till the end of the tutorial. I'll just set that reset, reset that back to normal. So ground color quite self-explanatory, change the ground color. So if I wanted it to be green, it's gonna go green. There you go. And obviously you get the kind of reflection of the ground to go up there. So I think the general settings that gray there, I think. Oh, sorry, it's not that color there. I'm just gonna reset it. So that's what that does. So ground check texture scale um, doesn't really make any effect on this sun sky mode because uh, we haven't exactly got a HDRI map where we can change the texture of it. You can't really change the texture of this ground color. And then we come to ground position mode. So it's probably normally set to auto. So if I change that to manual, we can change the ground position. I think I've covered this in the tutorial before, so I'll just go over again. So if I increase this, you'll see that her legs start disappearing because the actual ground origin is changed. So I'll just reset that. So there's not much you can really do with that X, Y, Z. I mean, you can play around with that. I just normally need to auto. And then draw ground just draws a ground plane. So uh, draw ground just catches the actual shadows. So if I turn that off, you won't get any shadows basically. So that's what draw ground does. You've stayed to the end of the tutorial, which I'm glad you did. So I'll show you something very cool you can do. I'm just gonna set the time here to, to three o'clock, 1500 hours. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna set the sun behind. So I'm gonna bring that behind here. It's just gonna be the longitude. There's our sun, there we go, there's our sun. Okay. So this is what I mean about the RGB value that we were looking at earlier. So at the moment it's set to one. When I set it to that magical number of 0 0.318, there we go. This is what we get. So we can actually see the sun now in the sky. So this is a really cool effect. So I can see the direction of the sun. Look, I can see it go up and down with the latitude, long, uh, with the latitude and the longitude go across. So this is something really cool you can do. Um, you can obviously change, for example, the scale of the sun. So I made it huge there. The intensity if you wanted to again, like we did. Okay, my favorite bit is you can do the actual, so if I have the sun there, and then you can have this lovely, kind of like lovely sun, lovely background here, the sun. So it's really cool stuff. So this is why I recommend this kind of value here, this zero, this magical value, 0 0.318. It's a, like a magical value. Obviously, if I turn that back to normal, you'll get the effect, but it won't be as, as uh, as good I think in my in my opinion but you your opinion may differ so there you go that looks really cool I'm sure you could think of various ways you could do really cool stuff so that's the really cool things you can do there just thought I'll give you a little tip there I just wanted to share a bit more and as a bonus you know what I'm going to do as a bonus I'm going to go through this very very quickly with you now with the infinite sphere 
crowd mode, you'll see that the sun changes because it's the actual, we've got to the ground mode. So infosphere with ground. So I think this is where the actual texture scaling actually comes into play. So you can see the texture scale, we could increase and decrease and you can see the kind of gra the ground kind of changing with the texture scale. So you see what we've done there. So again, if we go to finite sphere mode, we can control it again. So we get the same settings, multiplier radius. So if I choose five and 25, there's my dome. Actually needs to be a bit bigger. So maybe multiply by 10, there we go. And there you can see, we've got another cool effect here with the dome. I haven't changed anything else. All I've done is added a finite sphere and you can change again the texture scale again. You get some very, very cool effects. So if I, if I zoomed in here, you wouldn't know that was a dome there. See, it just looks like it's something else. So again, we could do the same with finite box. So if I set that back to five, set that to 10, set that to 10, and set that to 10. That's probably too small actually, let's change 50. There we go. Now the reason why it looks like that is because I've uh, changed the ground texture scale level not here. There we go. So you can do some, you know, you can get some very cool effects with Sunsky and it's uh, very underrated. Right, as another bonus tip, what I'm gonna do is show you another great tip. So if we change the environment mode to dome and scene, and if I say, for the environment map, I say, I don't want anything. It gives me sun sky settings. So I can do sun sky settings. As a bonus, what we can do now is create, is use spotlights as well. So we've got to create new spotlight. I'll just have it pointing from where my camera is. I'll just turn the luminosity up to 500,000, say, and there we go. So not only now can we have our lovely sun sky at the back, our lovely setting, we can also have some spotlights as well. So okay, so we covered so much information about the sun sky environment in that studio. I want to see you guys create some awesome renders using that information. And in next week's video, I'll be looking at emissive lighting. And while you're waiting for that video, check out these videos here. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next video.